Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast, episode 19 this week, almost at 20. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations to you too. Well, thank thank you. (laughs) Thank you for tuning in again. As usual, we'll be discussing all the latest gaming news here. A couple of interesting things to talk about this week, but first off, I'm going to introduce my co-hosts. Dan, this is Dan over here from the, the Low Grade Gamers. He's from iDigital Games, but he is the Low Grade Gamer. Dan, how are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Jumped back into a bit of Warzone recently with the uh, oh, whole, nice. whole acquisition taking over. I feel comfortable jumping back in and playing that. And uh, uh, it was a bit rough to start, a bit rough. It's, uh, you know, FPS games, if you don't... Uh, play them on a regular basis very different to playing elder scrolls where basically i turn into a werewolf and just mess people up can't really do that in call of duty i tried kept pushing the button but just just didn't want to transform i don't know i have noticed that nobody's a russian character anymore ah yeah that doesn't surprise (laughs) nobody uses any of them so uh but no my sniping is on point now it is. And uh, if you jump over to PVP, the new social media for gamers, oh. see my mad skills on there. I'm not endorsing PVP, PVP at all, by the way. Uh, not endorsing it yet. I, I'm, st- I'm still unsure if they're a scam. <laughs> Does it cost money? No, it's free, but they're really intent on asking people to invest. So now that I've mentioned PVP, the dodgy uh, social stealing of information, will inevitably chuck some PVP uh, advertisements into your feeds, but they are asking for a minimum investment from people of five hundred dollars. It's a cool. It's a cool aspect that we might uh, we might get into on the next episode podcast okay we call sounds them good episodes? yeah no idea i've got questions about and i've got questions about that so mm. is it dodgy is it not seems a bit dodgy that's such a lot that's a big chunk of money yeah yeah it is oh, anyways the other is standard standard talking. investment the lady really. voice yeah okay yeah 500 yeah fair enough uh the lady voice Laura, the lovely Laura. From That's me. Some kind of gaming. How are you? Good, good. Yep. The lady voice is doing pretty good today. Well, I just hadn't introduced you yet and you're already talking. So I thought, you know, some people might be a bit confused. Some people are like, who is this lady voice? Yeah. What's this lady voice going on? How are you then? What's yeah, new this week? Well, I've just been playing Rune Factory this week. Yep. Still on the Rune Factory 5. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Still on it. I've been obsessed with catching wanted monsters oh lovely yeah you read a very you good article out. on a uh, on a website that i i've heard of i um I was possibly just about to i digital games uh laura wrote a very good article actually on that yes if you want to so, read a review of that room factory five game head over to idigitalgames.com or idigital.games oh yeah lovely i'm so yeah. excited I- <laughs> and, uh, yeah read the article there's going to be a whole lot of new stuff going on over at iDigital Games so uh, exciting times yeah expanding a little bit trying to get more clicks I guess but um, yeah more, more news orientated as well as just buying buying of your digital games as the, as the name implies anyways I'm Tom I'm the other half of some some kind of gaming almost said some low grade gamers one see, third of that. See the confusion? Yes. One third of some low-grade gamers, one half of some kind of gaming. And let's get into the topics. Well, how, how have you been? Oh, well, I thought nobody was going to ask me, so I just went in. I've been great. Oh, good. Yeah. What have you been doing? What have I been doing? Yeah. I got into the uh, new game plus of Triangle Strategy this week. Absolutely brilliant game first time i've replayed a game straight up straight after in like a long time because there are so many games in my backlog 
Uh, yeah, so I guess that speaks volumes for how good the game is. Absolutely yeah, it fantastic. Does. If you're into uh, strategy RPGs and you have a Nintendo Switch, you cannot go wrong with that. It is beautiful. Mm. Might be, well, it is up there with Game of the Year for me already. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to yeah. be able to play that. Well, Once I mean, you... you're busy playing other things. <laughs> oh, mm. <laughs> Oh, look, we're I'm like, just joking. like five time. minutes in and I'm already sleeping on the couch tonight. Take your time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Anyways, let's, that's enough about us. Nobody cares about us. You care about what's been going on in the world of video gaming. And there are a couple of uh, big stories that broke this past week. So first up, we're going to discuss the uh, PlayStation Spartacus, as it was codenamed. It's now just a uh, Tears of PlayStation Plus. Is it a direct Game Pass competitor? Is it not? What is it involved? Will we be getting at all of that? Then we, of course, had the cancellation of E3 completely this year. So E3 as a physical event had already been cancelled. We all just, uh, I think we all just assumed that the digital event was taking place, but I don't I think, think they, they said it was going to take place, did didn't they? they? Yeah, yeah, okay, um, maybe they I'm did. Anyway, pretty sure that not was going to happen. Not anymore. Mm. That's that's been canned. Uh, Dan has quite a few things to say about that. Mainly, I told you so. And <laughs> the third, and probably the most upsetting one, is Breath of the Wild sequel has been delayed. So we have another couple of questions that uh, kind of stem from that delay. Anyways, I think we're going to kick things off with the uh, PlayStation Plus new announcements, their tiered system, and what that means for PlayStation users and Xbox users or Microsoft users as well. So as I'm sure you've heard, if you haven't, PlayStation Plus is moving into a three-tiered system. And the existing PlayStation Now, which is not available in Australia, but is in many other countries in the world, is being basically being integrated into the PlayStation Plus system. So you have three tiers of the PlayStation Plus now. First of all, you've got PlayStation Plus Essentials, which is essentially what PlayStation Plus is now. Oh my God, I've said PlayStation Plus so many times. (laughs) (laughs) If you're happy with your current PSN network, it allows you to play games online. If you've got Uh, You know, you get those monthly free games. If you've got a PS5, you get access to like 15-ish PS4 titles, uh, like the essentials, they call it. So that is standard. That's not changing. That's If you're happy with your current uh, service, then sweet, nothing's going to change. Then they have two upgraded tiers on top of that. You've got PlayStation Plus Extra which basically gives you access to a library of 400 PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5 games. That's a big library. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, You know, we don't know what games are coming, but I mean, Sony has some pretty damn good games. So I'm pretty confident there's going to be at least one or two people are going to want to play. Hopefully the dinosaur simulator is coming. Uh, T-Rex simulator. T-Rex simulator. Yeah, you guys would love that. Dan and his... Oh, like, Dan, you would love that. A lot dinosaurs. A lot dinosaurs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> See? And then the final tier is a retro tier, basically. So that is PlayStation Plus Premium, which gives you access to PlayStation 1, 2, PlayStation Portable titles, all natively emulated, available for download, and then streaming of PlayStation 3, because... PlayStation really dropped the ball in that generation and PS3 emulation is really hard and expensive and they don't want to do it, basically. So now, that's not... It is important to note. Yeah. yeah. I think you're about to say what I'm about to say, Dan, about how in Australia we don't get that premium tier. So if you're in a country that PlayStation now is not available in, it is because streaming is not available in your country, at least PlayStation streaming isn't. So what Australia, New Zealand, any other of those regions that don't get streaming, probably Brazil, some some South, South American countries, we get PlayStation Plus Deluxe, which has the PS1, PS2, PSP titles available, emulation, download, all that stuff. 
We just don't get the cloud streaming service of the PS3. And PlayStation hasn't, they haven't uh, said anything more. All they've said is that it's not going to be as expensive as premium. So right now, extra is sitting at a hundred US dollars and premiums at 120. So my guess is 110, somewhere in the middle. Does that make sense to everyone? Mm-hmm. So that puts it at like 145 Australian dollars. So what do we all think now that I've explained what's going on? Is that what you were going to say, Dan? Yeah, so not available in Australia, but there was something put out yesterday from, uh, I've got to double check the, uh, the journalist, but PlayStation have apparently responded to backlash of streaming the PS3. So mm-hmm. they have now started work on uh, hardware emulation on the PS5 for PS3 titles rather than mm-hmm. streaming. So if that happens, then awesome because we don't really miss out on the PS3 mm-hmm. yeah, yep. issues, uh, I guess. So I think, I don't think it's a Game Pass alternative, though. Yes, that, that is the major question rolling around. It's too different to be. It's not yeah. like trying to be Game Pass. It's just trying to be like the PlayStation equivalent. You know, they're yeah. trying to come up with something to offer, but they're not trying to directly compete with Game Pass mm. because it's, it's completely different. And the model of Game Pass is just not going to work for PlayStation. They had to do something different. PlayStation or Sony have actually already said, they said very early on when Game Pass was revealed that they don't think it will work. They don't think it's financially viable. No, so, of course it's not. That would be a crazy decision. They've got so many exclusives yeah. that if they were to release all of their exclusives day one, they're just going to lose a ridiculous amount of money. But Xbox doesn't have those exclusives. Like, that's why they offer their, like, they don't have very many exclusives no. to just, like, put on the shelves and expect to, you know, keep their console afloat through that means. No, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, PlayStation would be losing a bunch of sales. They could release God of War Ragnarok tomorrow and it would sell. 10 at least 10 million copies you know like that it's a big big game uh you know horizon and forbidden west has done really well you know, if they would have released the last of us three again i'm sure at least 10 million copies like they don't want to lose out on that they don't want to lose out on that microsoft needed this games pass to kind of keep people interested, interested yeah because yeah. they've only got like what three exclusives yeah wow well, if that or is it two forza halo is there another one dan you're the xbox boy yeah there is but i can't remember what it is and to be honest oh it can't be that good then (laughs) no and to be honest i as much as i hate to say this halo has lost its footing and has lost its way so yes well yeah because they release a fraction of yep. the game you can't release games in bit it's not modular you know i don't know yeah. it's not a puzzle yeah no, they've done they've um, done like there is nothing new to halo since its launch and to be honest not that this is a halo conversation but since watching the recent two episodes that i watched on paramount plus it's just shit like it's it's absolutely crap and i've I've got no idea yeah it's crap and people people who are supporting it at the moment you're just fanless like you you're just fanboying over the idea it is an awesome idea and they could have done it so much better than they have. Shame. The, like, just one example, okay? Uh, Elites, which is one of the elite aliens. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Mm because we think really hard about their their names. 
they're meant to be like a slender alien, very tall, seven foot tall, I think, but very slender as well. So, but ripped, right? They have muscle. And -hmm. then what came in the following uh, games and books as well, they reckon this is based on the books, which, yeah, very loosely. The, I didn't even know there was books. Yeah, there, there's there are, uh, I guess. But then they brought out the brutes, which were, as they said, they're basically big ass bears. But you know, they're bulky, they're ripped, and all of that sort of stuff. And they basically made the elites look like an elite, but with a brute's body. So. Now in the TV show, they've ju- they've just gone the wrong way with it. So now when they introduce the brutes, what what are they going to be? Even bigger? Yeah, it's just stupid. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. And then I've gone on tangent, but they just created this character that in the games as an example there's like four dudes with weird heads that were controlling the whole covenant and now there's a human controlling them what the effing this shit so back to my point with the halo series i'm not going to get paramount plus to watch it no we will sign up for our free seven day trial when the whole series is released and then we'll binge it I wouldn't That's my plan. Bother. Well, not if it's crap. No. Nah, I want to like, see it for Life's myself. too short to watch crap. No, well, we can be into the first two episodes, decide it's crap, then not watch it. Okay. Yeah. That's it's it. Crap. That's my plan anyway. It's crap. In but six weeks when it's all I Yeah, I, I think saying that this is a Game Pass equivalent is not, is not right. It's a completely different format that they've gone for. Well, I think that, like, the only difference is that the games aren't coming day one, right? Yeah, but that's, like, the main thing of Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. It's the main character. Games come day one, and the games on Game Pass are generally, like, top games. I don't think we're going to see that with PlayStation. I think we're going to see potentially a lot of, like, indie games released and take up that well, the, the thing is like eternal has been announced as coming already to the second tier the playstation 4 playstation 5 tier and that is like that's a an amazing oh look don't get me wrong they're gonna put some, they're gonna put some good ones months. in there yeah then they're, they're not putting um uh, yeah they won't do any day ones and anything that they uh, have will be stuff that's been out for 12 months already that's yeah at least i don't think they're going to put a time limit on that either i don't think they're going to say in 12 months this will be available on no no, on the psn i I think they're just gonna leave that open and have different time schedules depending on how well games do if yeah. it keeps selling why would you put it there exactly basically? maybe when it mm. start when sales start to slow down put mm. that on there and then yeah check yeah, it on there exactly. get some hype going and then people might buy it anyway but yeah it's it's not a game pass equivalent i think that's the wrong way to yeah look yeah at I, it. I, I think agree. it's a different I piece agree. i think it's the their version, version of mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's not it's not the necessarily direct competitor but it does i mean it gives you more content doesn't it if there's yeah. one or yeah, two i think i think two ps4 or ps5 games that you want to play that are on this service then upgrading to the second tier is worth it for you mm-hmm. if there is another one or two retro games that you are interested in playing that you don't have then that that third tier is worth it for you. So it's just, it's a very individual thing. If you have, if you own the entire PlayStation one collection, then like, obviously you don't, you don't need this, you know, my PlayStation two still works and those games are relatively accessible. So I don't need the PS two 
emulation. But PS1 games, like some of them could go, they can go goddamn pricey these All days. All of my PS1 games are just like absolutely destroyed. See, there you go. Yeah. Scratched. Mm-hmm. Don't work. Yep. So, the car wax repair is a myth. <laughs> the data's yeah, no, gone out of those scratches. You can't just put a bit of car wax in there. All right. The myth going around my primary school was uh, peanut butter and toothpaste. That is even more stupid. Yeah. Toothpaste peanut is, butter is and abrasive. Toothpaste. T- toothpaste is abrasive if you've got the yeah. right yeah. toothpaste. Look, man, I don't know. <laughs> I peanut was, butter. I was like, no. Oh, peanut butter makes I didn't sense, do it, right? but that was the myth. At yes, least car wax like, kind of is designed to fill in scratches in cars, is it? I don't know. I don't, I don't know anything uh, about cars. Wax is more for a, a shine or a sheen. You'd, you'd want to use polish, but then if you use the wrong polish, that can be quite abrasive, so you'd just mess it up anyway. But uh, let's talk about car detailing now. So <laughs> I've not <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I just want this because uh, as soon as this comes out, if Jack and Daxter is easily available, then I'm buying a PS5 that day. That's all I want to yeah, do. I, That's all I want to play is Jack and Daxter. I don't care about any other PlayStation be. title. I have uh, moderate interest, but. Uh, yeah, I want Jack and Daxter, and I want to play it over and over and over and over, and then get some car wax and then play it again. <laughs> there you go. Buy a PlayStation Five specifically for a PlayStation Two game. I like it, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> we will be getting this tier over here at some kind of gaming mm. because I mentioned Returnal and I mentioned that it's an amazing game, but I have not played it. And the reason I say it's amazing is because I've seen gameplay, I've seen reviews, all that stuff. I've seen many people say it's their favorite PlayStation 5 title so far. But I'm not huge on roguelites or roguelikes. So I, I'm just umming and ahhing. Games are expensive here in Australia, man. Especially like, like PlayStation 5 games. They're yeah. like over $100. Yeah, you Americans complain about 70 American dollars, right? Which is equivalent to about 91 Australian. For some reason, though. They cost that... way more than that. They're like 120 Australian dollars. For... Where does that extra money go, by the way? It's Which it's, is 90 American. It's, it's actually quite simple. Yeah. So in Australia, this is our big problem in Australia. We have 24, 25 million people as a whole. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the extent of our population. So of that 24, 25 million, how many are interested in gaming and how many in, are interested in PlayStation gaming specifically? It's, it's insignificant to Sony, which is why we're not getting additional services because they don't give a crap. You look at America yep. as an example where they have 344 million people versus our 24 million. So that's an extra 320 million for those that potentially didn't catch me uh, what I said early. That is a significant amount of more people that they are able to market to, sell to, so they don't need to have the prices as high. Whereas here, we are literally, and it, who cares what Australia is doing? Like, that, that's, the, that's the big problem. We, we just don't have the population density uh, as an example, uh, Ukraine has double the population that we do. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, we we are we're nothing. We're pretty insignificant when it comes to markets. That's for sure. And then and then New Zealand's even worse. Like nobody cares what's going on there. Like yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't care about no, us. New Zealand. Well, there's only one. There's pathetic. less people living in New. There's less people living in New Zealand than there is in Melbourne. There you go. Yeah. yeah insignificant so. market basically moral of the story is that games are 90 us dollars here for the playstation 5 oh crap i don't yes. really want to spend 90 us dollars to buy a game that i potentially might not like you know what i am willing to do though i'm willing to spend 140 an... on a game <laughs> no, to... <laughs> no. what, I, what i'm willing to do is spend an extra 40 us dollars for the year try out this game because again 
I can finish it in a year if I really like it for the 40 for half the price now, essentially less than half the price. And then also get access to another 399 games that I potentially might find one that I enjoy or haven't played or looked over or I, I was going through some times during the PlayStation 4 generation. So there is a lot of games that I uh, didn't catch on to during that generation. So I'm a hundred percent sure there's going to be a multitude of titles. I am going to be excited to play in that. Well, Spyro is going to be there probably at the very least. So that makes it worth it in itself. Well, that's the, that's going to be a premium tier, isn't it? Mm-hmm. The, the PlayStation one. Or deluxe, Spyros. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Or the deluxe. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit confusing. We don't get premium. We just get deluxe. So those, you know those what? games I'm, you can just I'm download. Not upset. That's, that's my understanding is the PS1, PS2 ones are just ones that you can just download and yep. have available. But I wonder yep, if they're, they're going to do DRM stuff. That's that's what will piss people off is if you have to be connected to the net to just open the damn game. Uh, that's that's mm. a very good point. Uh, I don't think so because what's the point in freaking downloading it then? But uh, who, who knows what these companies are doing? I mean, look well, at uh, Grand Turismo. Nintendo do it with a few titles. Yep. There you uh, go. I guess I guess I haven't noticed because I'm usually connected to the internet. Mm. But at the same time, like power goes out here all the time. So occasionally I'm not. If the power's gone out, you can't play the PlayStation. Yeah. That's why I like the Switch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so, it. Look, I think I mean it depends where you are in the world, but you know, I mean, even here, I mean, our internet is pretty piss poor, really. Oh, but, it's so bad. But it's still better than uh, a lot of other countries that can't can't even get online to, you know, open up the game sometimes. Mm. So that's where my thoughts more track to. I just, yeah, I, I just think it needs to, it, as long as it says something along the lines of it double checks that you're part of that subscription once every 30 days and that's it. That would be acceptable in my books. Yeah. Anything over, absolutely. Any, anything over that. Uh, yeah. I, I just, that, that sort of thing just pisses me off. Hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. It's a, le- less accessibility is never a good thing. hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited for it. I think I think a lot of people are excited for it. It's going to be mm. interesting. It's going to earn PlayStation some more money. Yeah, I mean they've got. But basically, I don't know necessarily think they want more people from this, but they want people like us who already have PSN to give them an extra Upgrade forty it. US dollars. A, yeah, a year, and then you know because I think they've got something like fifty million PSN subscribers at the moment i mean like game pass doesn't have that so if they can earn an extra 40 bucks a year you know or 15 bucks a month or whatever it might be then of course why, why would you not mm-hmm. yeah i'm pretty excited for it i'm excited for the ps1 games yeah there you go i think that's what i'm most excited for actually there is a game I'm- from playstation one that i would love to play again What's that? And I'm trying to, I'm literally trying to Google the name really quickly as I said it. Hot uh, Wheels Racing. No. That game was awesome. No, it was a Star Wars game. You should know me better than that. Oh, of course. Oh, of course it was a Star Wars game. I really want to play um, like OG Ghost in the Shell. Did anyone play oh. Ghost in the Shell? That's a good one. No. Movie was crap. But game was good. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know what it was called was like jedi knight something something but the cool thing about it and this is what i hope these games retain is the co-op aspect was like very lego like if that makes sense you know how like with lego games you can just jump in as the as the secondary player you could actually do that in this in this game so you you started very much yeah you, you started off in uh from the phantom menace so 
anybody remembers that scene, well, you should remember it if you like Star Wars, where Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn are with Newt Gunray and he's trying to poison them. That's basically where it sets and starts. See how much of this game I remember? I don't remember anything. Mm, yeah. And basically that's where it starts. And you can yeah jump in, be Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, and actually do it together, same as a Lego game. And it, yeah, oh. if they if they bring those games, we know I'm a little bit of a Star Wars fan, little little bit, just a little, just, just a tiny bit, just a little bit. We know that I will 100% jump on this thing. Jack and Daxter, between Jack and Daxter and that particular Sony game, there's also a Jackie Chan one that I remember. Where you, where you're Jackie Chan, you're just kicking ass the whole time. It's very funny. Yeah, no, uh, Jackie Chan, I remember that guy. He yes. was great. The early two thousands, he was the dude, wasn't he? Yes. So if they do, if they do that, I, I will literally buy a PlayStation Five tomorrow to do it. And again, if you are struggling to get a PlayStation Five, you seriously need to jump on to the Twitter handles uh, that are actually. They use bots to actually hunt down when a new PlayStation uh, drop happens. And I'm telling you right now, there are people that complain, but they're wrong. Because I have had easily, since the last time we spoke about this, which was what, episode three, four? One of the uh, early ones. Yeah. One of the early up. ones. I would have seen a notification. So one of them's called PS5 Stock Alerts Australia. I would have seen a notification at least two times a week on average. Yeah, and so like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, if you really, really want one, jump onto the. There's three particular ones that I watch, and they these guys are on fire. You turn on notifications on on the Twitters. And uh, yeah, you you'll get one hundred percent. That's how, that's what I'm going to do. As soon as I find out whether or not I can get Jack and Daxter, I'll just I'll just wait. Mm, wait. My enough. advice, my advice though, is don't use uh, any sort of afterpay, PayPal, pay and for zip pay. Don't use any of those when you go to do these purchases, as those purchases do take longer. So that that is the big complaint that I have seen from following these uh, people on Twitter is that people are struggling to purchase them with buy now, pay later stuff. So if you do want Just one... Just the money that you've got to buy your PlayStation, yeah, you, save gonna, up for it first. Yeah, you're going to need like to use, use the money that, uh, that yeah you've saved from uh, trying to get a PlayStation for the last two years or whatever. So exactly, you think yes. you have it? Yes, that's um, that's my two cents or thirty Lovely. cents. <laughs> yes, more like thirty. All right, moving on. I believe. Mm. I think. Uh, I think that that's enough about that one. E three. E three has been canned. It's in its entirety. Dan, I know you've got got a few things to say here, so why don't why don't you kick us off? I'm pretty sure I predicted this. Yeah, I don't know if you necessarily said it was canned, but I'm pretty uh, sure on podcast I said nobody's going to want to go, hmm. and that's obviously what's happened. Hmm. So uh, I don't. I think from a like a company standpoint i just don't think that hurt anything i just there was a lack of communication on e3's behalf and nobody had heard anything so i think it was a, both a combination of the e3 company themselves as well as what what you were saying we have state of play you got the nintendo directs i don't know what xbox is doing just they all have Game their Pass own and not, and not tell anybody. But yeah, but last year E3 was digital and mm -hmm. there was still a big, a huge Microsoft presence. Their presentation. I feel like this was the, was was the, the only one. 
anything. It was yeah, awesome. it was the yeah. Yeah, Sony but, haven't been a part of E3 for a while now, though. And Nintendo yeah. wasn't there last time. And, I don't. Think. Yeah, they were. They there was Nintendo Direct. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it, it closed. Was, it was. It closed with the Direct. It was because uh, then they released something later that was even bigger. From memory, a month or so. Nintendo. After that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there wasn't that. anything new. What? The, the Nintendo Direct? E3. Uh, E3. Yeah. Yeah, what, what do you mean? Like, that's where, that's where Microsoft showed off their Bethesda. Like, we've, we've purchased it it's here. We're doing things. This is what we're doing with Bethesda. Starfield was announced. To, yeah, I'm um, talking about all Microsoft. Updates on Starfield, all of that. Um, yeah, we're talking about Nintendo. Smash. The Smash character, classic. Uh, the Life is Strange. Guardians of the Galaxy was coming. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, Two Point Campus. Laura, I know you're excited about that. Metroid Dread. Oh, that's when that was announced. Yeah. Why did I feel like... I Monster don't know, maybe... It... Stories, WarioWare, oh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. That's an amazing so Maybe they game. just did a crap job. Uh, Mario and Rabbit, it. already knew about that. Uh, Skyward Sword was announced. Oh yeah, there so, you go. Uh, that's why. That's why it was crap. Skyward Sword was shit. Heaps of stuff announced. So yeah, and then, huge. yeah, yeah. So I mean, either there was much new stuff. Either way, I remember predicting this. I no, I just, you did. You did. You definitely did. But I'm just saying that, like, the digital format. Like it worked for them last year. So something, maybe it didn't work for the companies involved. Yeah, well, that's that's potentially a big one. I think, I don't know. I thought the state of play, just with what they're doing with the, with the state of play or whatever you call it, PlayStation presents. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, the one, yeah. I just feel when they did, do those it seems to have a very i don't know it's just better than what e3 was and that's yeah. just from sony sony haven't been there since before it it went digital and before the pandemic and yeah but if sony was pulling stuff. out everybody was eventually gonna like yes yeah, so people yeah. the, the the companies want to control it that's the thing so microsoft had a big big part to play in the last E3 and mm -hmm. they probably got to call 90% of the shots because that was the that was a you know with PlayStation out you don't want to piss off Microsoft as an example because then if you lose Microsoft or Nintendo it was going to be the end for them anyway so yeah. I mean I, I, don't, I don't know I, I, I don't think E3 was that amazing anymore or that exciting i think i yeah i think the company's doing their own thing is just better and it's probably significantly cheaper for the companies yeah, yeah. no I, sorry go on Laurie. when e3 was like an in-person thing and it was like a huge event that would have been like then it sort of had a place but then when it became digital it became like pretty much the same thing as all of the um, Nintendo Directs or um, not play, state of plays yeah, and all of that kind of stuff. But, yeah. So I feel like when it became digital, it sort of became pretty much those things and it was just another one of those things, but with probably a lot more organization and stress involved. But when it was an in-person event, it definitely had its own place definitely yeah i think not only for like key though yeah in person is the key because not only would it have been an incredible opportunity to go and see as like a consumer but it allowed all of the people that work at these companies to um network yes. with one another and possibly pr plan projects for the future, rub shoulders, you know, that sort of thing. So when it went digital and it lost that unique aspect, mm -hmm. it was kind of the beginning of the end, I suppose. No, I 100% agree. That's exactly the point I was about to make, Laura. I know for a fact, 
I say I know for a fact, but I can't remember the name of the company. It was either Super Rare Games or um, uh, some. I want to say I Digital Games, but that's Dan. Uh, <laughs> We're yeah, solid. one of one of those like one of those companies that takes indies and releases digital uh, digital editions of those. They would make a bunch of deals at E3 every year because they would go around to a bunch of those indie developers Schmoozing. and they're like, hey. Want to release a physical version of your game? And then limited run. Limited run. That's the thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah, limited run or super. I think it was limited run actually. And yeah, they you know rub, rub shoulders with people, made deals. Great. That works for them. Uh, as far as the consumer is concerned, I mean, you know, you go there and stand in line for five hours to play a demo of the new Pokemon game. I would or, go there. Or Silk Song. For sure. It's basically just a convention, you yeah. know? Yeah. And yeah, so I think definitely that's great. Like, awesome. Being in Australia, obviously we couldn't do that. Uh, I'm not a game dev, but I enjoyed. So it's, it's basically always been digital for me anyway. And I definitely enjoyed and look forward to all of these announcements we got. Because it is a big time. People have come to expect a bunch of announcements then. It makes sense halfway through the year, what's coming in the second half, all that stuff. So from like a purely personal point, I want it. I like it. It's always been digital for me anyways. From the company's points of view, it's a bit worthless now, isn't it? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, they can just do an EA state of play or... Uh, Bandai Namco presents or mm. whatever they want to do in their own time. And they can do it around E3 time anyway, if they want. Yeah, what, E3 it. is meant to be on June 10th? What's stopping them from releasing something on June 10th? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. You know? And they only have to organise it within themselves and their own company rather than trying to mm. organise it with, you know, everything else. And probably paying E3 a bunch of money too. Well, yeah. I'm sure it would cost a lot, like advertising or whatever, you know? Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, it's just, it's a bit irrelevant. Isn't the it? end of an era though, isn't it? Well, apparently it's coming back next year. That's the thing. They're, they've stopped the digital event and they're putting all of their focus into coming back as an in-person event in 2023. That's what it had going for it, the in-person mm -hmm. aspects. Do we think it's actually going to come back though? Well, is it, it's going to be hard to come back after being gone and being digital for so long yep 2020 there was nothing 2021 just digital 2022 nothing haven't had an in-person event since 2019 so have people lost but it is e3 as well you know like there's nothing else really like it so ah well jeff keely is he doing his own one, is he? Yes, he is trying to... Uh, Dan's smile just instantly dropped when I said <laughs> that one. He was smiling. He just went, oh, God, here we go. Oh. Jeff Keeley is trying to monopolise the industry. Of course he is. Yeah, Summer Games Fest. His uh, Summer Games Fest. Is, Summer Games Fest. Yep. Why does it sound like a crappy festival? Yeah, yeah it does sound like <laughs> a crappy festival, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Uh yeah, he wants. It was originally started as like an E3 competitor. He said he wanted it to overtake E3. When E3 tweeted out that they were cancelling this year, he tweeted back with a winky face. It's like he he wants it. He wants this space. I don't want him to have it, but that's just me. I don't I don't like the monopoly of industries, especially when it's him. E3 is a pretty like trusted and tried and true thing. So hopefully it will be able to come back next Let's year. Just do our own. Better than ever. Call it D8. D8. Yeah. Date. I don't know. The first, first two things that came to my head. Instead of E3, D8. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there are three E's that E3 stands for, but I, I can't for the life of me remember what they are. Yeah, I reckon we, we just do our own. What, us three? Yeah. Yeah, screw Jeff. Yeah. Get wrecked, create Jeff. Our, create our own monopoly. Move over, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff. Here comes Laura, you don't D8. Like it either, do you? I don't know. There's something about, I don't really like know him personally or anything, but there's just something about him. 
I don't know what it is. I don't, I don't know like his founded. face. Yeah. <laughs> his face is fine. I don't know. <laughs> Oh god, that's funny. That's I don't sure. know what it is, so I probably shouldn't really say anything about it. But I don't know. There's something about him that just makes me not want him to monopolize the market and just ruin E3's good name with his summer games fest. I think racist. Nintendo, for example, has always supported E3, and I don't think they're going to be easily poached by someone like Jeff. So. That's that's my hope. I hope Microsoft is the same. Sony is doing its own thing. So I guess we just... I think he did secure, like, first gameplay look at Elden Ring last year for Summer Games Fest or something like that. Some big thing he managed to secure. So he's got... There's some stuff. That's a, that's all I know I'm about sure it, though, so. I'm sure that it'll probably... Well, yeah. It probably would be pretty successful. Yeah. I, yeah. He knows a lot of people. He can pull a lot of strings, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the face of mainstream gaming, isn't he, really, mm-hmm. at the moment? So I guess time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, you know what? You guys have conveniently forgotten about something I mentioned on podcast a couple of weeks ago. And you know what? I would kind of prefer for you guys to continue to forget, but I'm going to bring it up anyway because I'm a man of my word. What is it? It uh, we're we're kind of moving on to the next story, but this this thing combines the combines the two. I said on a recent podcast <gasps> that if Zelda Breath of the Wild two was not talked about at E three, I would eat a shoe. Now, <laughs> E three has been cancelled, and Breath of the Wild two is delayed. You have to eat a shoe. I guess I'm eating a shoe. What did That's you have hilarious. to do to get slapped in the face? Oh, was that it? No, I thought no, that was no. it. I was, a I was eating shoes. No, nah, I, I reckon Laura gets to slap you in the face. That's what I'm pretty sure it was. Let's do a Head vote. over to twitch.tv forward slash some kind of gaming to see Laura slap me in the face. Well, if it was me, I would prefer to get slapped in the face than eat a shoe. It doesn't sound that... Um... I'll cover it in butter. Put it under the grill. Maybe some cheese. You, you would probably die. Let's be honest. I don't yeah. think you could just like eat a shoe and get away with it. Oh man, uh, I'm, I know it's been done. Has I, it? I reckon we Who just is get out there eating you. shoes? Who's out there eating shoes? What if I just eat my cereal out of a shoe? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's okay. eating cereal. No, no but that's cereal cereal. with milk out of a shoe. Yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah. Just do a shoey. No, uh, he's there. done no. that. He, he does yeah. that for fucking fun. Yeah, so shock exactly. value is gone. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do that without needing to be peer pressured into it. Yeah, yeah it's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so, just how he um, normally drinks. Yeah, cereal yeah. with milk <laughs> out of a shoe. Yeah. yeah. Slash uh, out yeah. twitch.tv forward slash some kind of gaming. Took me a second. Yep. I will... Uh, I, yeah, I'm a man of my word. I, w- I will do something along those lines. Oh, does that mean we can get Fruit Loops? Yes, we can get Fruit Loops. I don't even like cereal, so it's a double whammy for me. I love Fruit Loops. Yeah, I don't. What about bacon and eggs <laughs> in there? Yeah, I mean, Whoa, we could have all kinds of breakfast, <laughs> breakfast food in the shoe. Oh, bleh. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's going to be... I just thought about runny egg yolks yeah, in shoes. It's, it's going to be gross. And yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I reminded you guys of it to my future Tom. If you're listening, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. What uh, were the slaps about? I want to... I don't know. We'll go back and figure that out because <laughs> there is something there. Mm. But this does lead us on to our next story of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 being delayed. Laura, would you like to kick us off here? Yeah, well, very disappointing news. When was it last week? Was it the 30th of March, I think? There was a surprise announcement from Nintendo they released a video on their YouTube saying that Breath of the Wilds won't be releasing on time in 2022 and it's going to be coming out in spring 2023 Mm -hmm. which is autumn if you're in the southern hemisphere which is like a year I have a question and this question is directed at you young lady (laughs) can you please 
say the name of this particular game. Breath of the Wilds 2. There you go. So... Well, the name hasn't actually been announced yet. Breath of the Wilds 2 is just like a placeholder. Yeah, they yeah. actually said that they won't be releasing the name because, well, when you think about it, a lot of the Zelda names allude to some sort of important part of the game itself. Yeah. So if they release the name, they're going to release a clue. Mm, yeah. True. Operator so, of Time, Wind Waker, Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess. If, if Breath you could of the say that name different. one more time. Breath of the Wilds too. Why is it my accent or something? No. Has Tom picked it up yet? Nah. I don't know what you're on about, man. Why do you put an S on the end of wild? Oh, I don't know why I do that. I've always done that. It's Even in our YouTube videos. I, it's something I noticed uh, the other day when I was reading a particular article that young Laura did. <laughs> Ah, oh, there you go, Laurie. I, I, need to get back I was putting. Don't uh, even was, know the name of my favorite game. Yes, pretty much. I was doing a yeah, sort of transcription for uh, people that you know potentially can't read properly, or you know, it was in terms of C, blah blah blah. Uh, I was doing some transcription so that way we had audio of all of uh, Laura's news articles. And as I copied it across to this uh, particular artificial intelligence thing, it made it really clear. <laughs> and I was like, why is it saying Breath that? Of the wilds. Yeah. And I was like, why is it why does it keep saying wilds? Like, this is just weird. Yeah. And then I was like <laughs> I looking don't at why I always do that. It's just was, one wild. I yeah. started changing the name, like the different people. I changed it to a guy. I changed it to a different girl. And I was like, why the hell does it keep saying wilds? And then I went. <laughs> That's what it says. It's Laura. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's not this. This weird <laughs> habit that I have. Just yeah. something that I thought yeah. was uh, entertaining for those that are depressed that it's not coming out. I just thought a little bit of entertainment would go uh, a long way. <laughs> Uh, but I predicted this, and I reckon it's in correlation with the switch, whatever I was going to call it. Uh, I like Super Switch. What is yeah, Super it? Super Switch. Like Super Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Switch. The I switch. think the Super Nintendo Switch. I like that. Series I know, you call it like the Dream or something. No, or I had a good I had a gangster switch name. Amiga. <laughs> I don't know. Little switch. Little switch. <laughs> so, yeah. Look, I'm I'm okay with delayed games. As yeah. Long, yeah. Me too. As, Take as your long time. as there's, I, like I I feel they provided a decent time to it. As in, it's not like it was going to be released tomorrow and they've come out and they've said no. Uh, you know, like the, the Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker saga is released tomorrow on Steam. And, you know, it's not like they're coming out today and going, oh, sorry, we're not releasing that. Like, that's poor form. But to mm. give the amount of notice that they have, I, I think... Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, do I want to play the game? Yes. Like I, I don't feel I've had, and I'm probably gonna get shot for this. Uh -huh. Tom, you got a pussy in your lap. <laughs> I have a pussy cat on my lap. Yes, I do. He's cute. Our cat's here. His name's just, Miso. I just, Say I hi, Miso. Little, I saw a little little ear, and I was like, well, "What's going on with Tom down there?" That's a bit <laughs> odd. <laughs> I've sprouted ears from my pants. No, 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 that's a cat. Uh, but I, I don't think... I would play... Go on, Laura. No, I want to know what Dan's going to get shot for. Yeah, 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 me too. Oh, I don't think there's been a game on the Switch that... I don't know if I want to say it. 
Yeah, Breath of the Wild. Okay. Be, it might not no, be an episode. It, it might not be an episode twenty if he says it. No, say it because now I'm curious. Look, it's okay to be wrong sometimes, Dan. Look, Breath of the Wild. We can have another heated argument. Oh, it's coming. Breath of the Wild is the best game on Switch by mm-hmm. a long shot, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And the fact that the second one hasn't arrived, the fact that the 64 versions, as far as I'm concerned, look ugly with the (laughs) outer edges. It's just all a bit weird. I I don't think the intent, I don't, for me, the Switch doesn't have anything going for it. No, but that's like Arceus was like could have been better. So the graphics issues that I had, I I went to play it again the other day and I just literally I would have been on the game for 45 seconds to maybe two minutes and I was already like, nah, I'm not doing this. Pisses me off. And I got out of it. Like I just don't think there's anything that exciting that's happening on the Switch. So I have a big issue with people saying this because for Microsoft, we've got Starfield coming out at the end of the year, maybe. For PlayStation, we've got God of War Ragnarok coming out. That there's like there's there's two big titles. For the Switch, we have already had Arceus, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. Triangle Strategy. Continuing on in this year, we've got Bayonetta 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, uh, the Mario Soccer game, Mario Strikers, uh, Nintendo Switch Sports, Live Alive is a bit of a smaller title, but it's still really exciting. Like, And then there's a bunch of stuff that we don't even know about yet. Advance Wars is still yet to come. There is so much stuff. Pokemon, Pokemon Violet and Crimson or whatever they are. There is so much stuff coming to the Switch this year. It is still the strongest year for the Switch, despite Breath of the Wild 2 not coming. In, in fact, I'm, I'm almost glad it's not coming because there's too much stuff to play on that console this year. Like, I would have just gotten into the new Pokemon and then Breath of the Wilds would have released and I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to play? It is a really good year for the Switch, but there's also plenty more games coming to the PlayStation rather than just the one that you mentioned, you know, like there's yeah, still there's, a lot of stuff coming for all of the other ones. Yes, yeah, there, but there is, but my, is not as strong. my point is that there's nothing for me. Yeah. Yeah, but you can't like that's that's your problem. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that's it not, is. That's and not that, Nintendo's fault. Like that just means you're not interested in a bunch of Nintendo IPs, which is fine. That's okay. But you yeah. can't say that the year isn't strong. Like all, all I got out of what you're saying is that your interest, like Nintendo, is Zelda for you, and you want Zelda, and that that that's all that's interesting, which is fine. That's okay. No, I okay. gave. But there is a whole lot of other stuff coming. Yeah, and I've got. A, and I've has got already a, come. I've got a massive library of Switch games, but what I'm saying is, Breath of the Wild, for me, was the best one by far. Arceus to me was a letdown in a lot of aspects. In a lot of aspects, it was really, really good. And I liked the fact that it was different. But I also dislike grinding. And that's what I feel, you know, is a big part of that game. Yeah, unless, I think the unless grinding, the grinding is fun. Unless grinding is is, you know, part of it is is fun. But I didn't have an issue with sword and shield. Like, was it the best? No. But I had less uh, software issues. They with... were the best Pokemon games at the time, Sword and Shield. Yeah. I Anyways, I... this is becoming too much a, uh, is the Switch good or not? Or but like personal. No, no, no. I no. like you... these games. I don't like those games. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, for me, Breath of the Wild was the biggest and best title 
on the Switch. And no, I'm not really interested in what they've got coming out. Look, the new Pokemon game, I'm still holding out hope. But again, Arceus literally got to the point where I was just pissed off playing it. Now, I'm potentially one of very few that had graphics issues that bad. But the whole experience just dampened everything for me. Like, I jumped on and I played the Mario Deluxe stuff, the DLC there. That was pretty, that was all right. You know, glad I didn't pay for it. But that was okay. That's my, that's my point at the moment. For me personally, and that's what I want to really stress. This is for me personally. Breath of the Wild was a fantastic game and still is a fantastic game and was a great escape. And while I'm happy to wait for Breath of the Wild 2, if they mess it up, that will be a very big issue. There is a lot of pressure on Nintendo to get this right. I yeah. think that comes into play with the delay. I am all for a game being delayed in order for it to be a really good and complete yeah. game upon yeah. release. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Unlike something like Halo, which was staggered. Yeah. Promises or something were made like that just were not met. Hit something like the game that shall not be named. Yes, that is which well. didn't even work. Yeah. So I'm all for delays. Yeah. Honestly. Also crunch as well. Like you don't want Yeah, you don't want crunch in a place and no, no, that's unhealthy work practices. Yeah, so yeah. so oh, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm sad, yeah. but I'm down for the delay. And there's plenty more things. Yeah, like like Tom said before, to be honest, maybe it's a good thing that it's gonna be delayed because there is so many incredible games that are coming out this year on the Nintendo and on other consoles. Mm -hmm. So maybe by delaying it. Breath of the Wilds will have more of a more of a time to shine when it's not like in amongst all of these other incredible titles that are being released this year. Mm -hmm. It would have come out really close to the latest Pokemon, like the yep. first mm. open world mm. Pokemon games ever. Um, it would have come out really close to Hogwarts Legacy mm -hmm. as well. So hopefully it'll give it its own space to thrive and everything you know we're not going to have our backlogs totally filled up which they already are yeah that's going to be like a at least a 200 plus hour game for the both of us mm. What's yeah we're going to have to buy two copies oh yeah oh easy yeah, yeah for sure yeah uh prepare to not have any content from some kind of gaming when <laughs> breath of the wild 2 releases because yeah we'll, we'll be busy playing breath of the wild 2 mm -hmm. wild 2 so, yes, yeah. wild. Let's, I don't know why I went to that. Let's tack something on here. So, because there's bound to be people feeling like me out there, where their Switch, I guess, uh, is collecting a little bit of dust, and I'd like to do more with it. And you guys are very Nintendo-esque people. I, I like to bounce around a bit. But, uh, and I do prefer my xbox unless we're talking about breath of the world what do you guys think is something that's coming out this year that's not pokemon right that you could not necessarily put in the same uh bucket as breath of the wild but what could tide somebody like me over until the new breath of the wild comes out so is there a particular game that you guys think is similar enough in style that it would help people like me pick up the Switch again? Or is my Switch staying where it is until the new Pokemon comes out? Funny that you should ask, Dan. We actually made a YouTube video about that. Yeah, yeah, we actually did. Yeah, a bunch of uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild-esque type games. I think the title is something like games to play while you're waiting for Breath of the Wilds too. Yeah, it's exactly that actually. 
Uh, and that includes everything from uh, older games that are available on the system, such as The Witcher 3, uh, to indie titles, to just like, yeah, ga- games that feel like Zelda. As far as new stuff is concerned, uh, if you, you haven't, uh, it's not for everyone, don't get me wrong, but Xenoblade, if you haven't mm. tried a game in the Xenoblade uh, universe, then... That's one I would suggest. Yes, definitely. Uh, the, the battle system is in, entirely different. It's not the same at all, but yeah. it is really beautiful world. I, I'm not going to say open world because we, we're not entirely sure how Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is going to work, but those games look absolutely beautiful, mm-hmm. really long RPGs, so much to explore, so much to do. Highly recommend those. Uh, Monolith, Monolith Soft did drop the ball with Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So if you haven't played one, I recommend getting Xenoblade Chronicles, the definitive edition, or Xenoblade Chronicles, Torna, the Golden Country. They are the titles I would recommend. If not, just wait for number three to come out. Uh, if you are a big fan of the, I guess, the hack and slashy action style combat of Breath of the Wild, then Bayonetta might be for you bayonetta 3 it is a big action orientated game uh so if that's your style then go for that as you said pokemon is a big one as well there's uh, another game as well that's like it, it's like heavily inspired by breath of the wilds so i reckon um immortals phoenix rising yeah yeah that is a really good game that is available on other consoles as well but yeah i agree with that laura that is a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. So, that could tide you over. Definitely. So, yeah, I definitely recommend picking that up. Having said this, do we think Nintendo is going to release more Zelda specific content to tide us over? Well, I have been holding out on playing. This is this is my personal hopes and dreams that I'm projecting. Mm. You know, you've got to say these things, put them into the universe. <laughs> And then hopefully one day they'll come out. But I started playing Twilight Princess on the Wii and I stopped because I just think it is a perfect game for the Switch. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to play it on the Switch. And I thought it was going to come out on the Zelda anniversary and it didn't. But there was a lot of rumors of Twilight Princess Wind Waker package coming. Mm -hmm. So I'm really hoping that maybe they're going to release that to be like, yeah, you know, I know that you've been crying yourself to sleep about Breath of the Wilds being delayed, but maybe this will heal your wounds a little bit. Dan, I see you have a question. It's coming to the Switch. They announced it. Nah. No, they Twilight did not. Princess. No, they didn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sorry. I was going to say, unless it's no. been in the last like, oh my God. hour while we've been recording this, no, I so- wouldn't know. Question. I can't remember. Be- yeah, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember a lot of the Wii Zelda titles. Twilight Princess, yeah. is that the one where you're a wolf? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one I want wolf. too. Yeah. yeah, I want that. Yeah, yeah. Skyward yeah. Sword it is shit. Is. Skyward the- Sword is the worst Zelda game. Yeah, By far. It is. Like, yeah, it's not, it, not my favorite. It is absolute. Garbage. garbage. It's okay. It it's is all right. absolute gar- No, look, it's not that bad. But for me, I, I, yeah, I'm not interested. But yeah, Twilight Princess is one that I would, uh, I would be okay with. And there's another one, isn't oh, there? One of the, it is one of the best ones, in in my opinion. It's up there with your ocarinas. And- I just think, like, with the motion controls and stuff, it's going to be like a perfect addition okay. to the Switch. I don't I want agree. motion controls. No, nah, they'll, they'll bring it over for Twilight Princess, but the motion controls Why not, better. though? Like, because whenever, like with Skyward Sword, you did have the option to not use the motion controls. Mm-hmm. So I guess they'll probably do the same thing. Like, why wouldn't you give the option and then you can just turn it off if well, you don't want it? Well, Twilight yeah. Princess was released on the GameCube as well. Yeah. So those options yes. are there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see. I don't see why not. The HD... Uh, we actually did a YouTube video on this as well, but the HD 
remakes of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker is the one I want because I missed out on Wind Waker. Didn't have a GameCube back in the day. Had uh, my parents bought me a PlayStation 2 instead. I was, I was too young, unfortunately, to buy my what? own GameCube. What but, crap parents? Uh, oh, I know, right? <laughs> didn't, didn't buy me all the consoles. <laughs> no, no, I was fine. It was good. The, the PS2 was great. But yeah, I, I missed out on Wind Waker. I, I haven't played that before and I would love to play it. Uh, the HD remakes exist. You know, they, they were released on the Wii U. Obviously, I mean, they did good for the Wii U, but uh, that's absolute crap when you compare it to anything else. So I, I'm just disappointed. I, I we're holding out hope, aren't we? Mm. We're like, I think we mentioned this in our video. I think if Breath of the Wild 2 was delayed, they will release that to tide us over. They I hope so. Double package. With Maybe those they two. won't, but I mean, they haven't said that they're going to. This is no. all just us hoping. Speculation. Here's another hope. What are they going to do with the old top-down Zeldas? Because now that we have the Switch, which is handheld and home console, their Zelda titles have been like condensed into one. So we have the top-downs on the handheld systems, such as you go back, um, at, like on the Game Boy Advance, you had the Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, the Minish Cap. Ooh, that is a game. I love the Minish Cap. It's actually one of my favorites. Yeah. Totally underrated Zelda game. Link's Awakening, all that stuff. And then, obviously, you know, your Ocarina of Time, so yeah, your Wind Wake is that on your home consoles. Will they be bringing us a, a top-down Zelda game in this possibly a remake like they did with Link's Awakening? Or oh, imagine a Link's Awakening-style remake with the Minish Cap. That is essentially where I was going. I would love that. Yes. Me too. <laughs> it would be phenomenally cool. I think I think that possibility is it exists still. It does exist. Nope. Yeah. It does exist. I don't I don't see why they wouldn't try something like that. I don't think there's going to be a new top down necessarily. No. no I, think. I don't think they're going to be releasing any new games and new Zelda games until they release Breath of the Wild. No. But a remake, I, I think yeah. I think that's entirely possible. It is possible. Yeah. Why not? The, again, the engine's there for the Link's Awakening. Why, why not just, yeah, throw us the Minish Cap? Why not throw us Oracle of Seasons? Why not do a dual Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, like they did with like, Pokemon, Sword and Shield? You know, that's where that kind of started. Why, why not give us that? Why Screw not? It. Remake those two, charge us 80 bucks each. There you go. You've made $160 from some kind of gaming straight up. Why not, Nintendo? Mm. Why not? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know how likely that is compared to the HD remakes, but I think it's there. I think it is a possibility. Mm. The final thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that Breath of the Wild had a six-year development cycle, and this one is going to have Breath of the Wild Two is going to have a six-year development cycle, or is it seven? Uh, I'll check the numbers later. It's too many anyway. Point is, same development cycle between. Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild and its sequel. What does that say? Because the engine for Breath of the Wild already exists. Well, they said in the um, in the video that they're adding heaps of new gameplay mechanics. Mm. And so that's the reason? So I what think the delay? Yeah. It's going to be cars. Hmm? Cars? Yeah. Mechanics? Cars? What? <laughs> Malarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we needed a sound effect there. <laughs> we for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was I like good. it. I like it. That was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was bad. Uh, it, that it, was it, a good dad it, joke. It was, yeah, and that's what I am. Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look, look, they're all proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> so. There is a post, uh, which I was just trying to find, on nintendolife.com. Oh, yeah? And it talks about the most likely games to be ported from uh, the Wii U to the Switch. So yeah. apparently this is based on a number of things, but this... It, they also, which I which I think is really cool, they've put the Switch port probability in there as well, out of 10. 
So the likelihood, uh, as an example, of Star Fox Zero, which was a Wii U title, is about 4.9 out of 10 possibility. Uh, there's just not enough appetite for it. So that's what they've gone based on as well. So the reason I bring this up is because I had a feeling Twilight Princess was on this list. Yeah, of course it is. And it is. And so yeah. is another game that Tom might be excited for. Both these games rank a 6 out of 10 in terms of port uh, probability, which is actually the highest of every game that they've actually put on this list. So, and that's Twilight Princess in HD and The Wind Wakers. Mm-hmm. Notice the point there. there. I don't know if you noticed. That's a, it's a yeah. dig at you, Laura. <laughs> the Wind Wakers HDs on the Wii U's. <laughs> I'm so funny. I need my yeah, stand well, up. Eh? Yeah, I'm loving it. I need my own stand up show. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, if you do want to check it out, nintendolife.com. I thought that was an interesting article. Is it, I think it's old. Yeah, I've, I've read that article. It's all just, it's essentially all just uh, speculation as well. I mean, no, Nintendo it's, Life. It is, don't necessarily have anything like they're not connected with Nintendo. No, no, no. Um, you know, the same parent company or they are just like a a news website. Uh, but it is it is interesting. I mean, there what we've got those Star Fox Zero, as you said, uh Xenoblade Chronicles X is still stuck on the Wii U. Uh and then that's that's pretty much about it, you know. I mean, we've got Toad's Treasure Tracker and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and Super Mario 3D World. Like they're all on the Switch now. You know, it's just a matter of time. They want they, those games did crap because the system did crap. So they Nintendo wants to bring them across. Makes sense. Makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I mean that's that's sort of where I was going with it. Is mm. the Wii U was such a colossal failure. Mm-hmm. Um that I, I I think a lot of their titles were just sort of binned quite easily when they could have actually been quite good. And yeah, oh, don't get me wrong. Like some of those games are are awesome, like really cool. I mean, like Breath of the Wild released on the Wii U as well. Like everyone mm. forgets that that it was like it was actually a cross gen title. So. I mean, the Wii U has some has has some great games. Don't get me wrong, that's for sure. And I, I like the idea of it, the gamepad thing that was unique. Uh, you could play a bunch of DS and 3DS titles on there because you had that second screen, which acted as the touch screen. So the virtual consoles on that were great. Like it wasn't. I mean, look, it was a it it, it was crap. I'm not going to deny that, but it's less crap than people give it credit for. I think. Yeah, that that I agree with. Yeah. Yeah, it just it, it didn't have the third party support, you know, which make again it makes sense. Why would you release a game on there when there's 15 million people that own one, and then there's you know 100 million people that own a own a PS4? You know, it's it's pretty obvious. But what I just mentioned then with the uh, Breath of the Wild releasing on the Wii U, I think also influences this long development cycle of the sequel to Breath of the Wild. The fact that this is going to be Switch native, it's not releasing on anything else. They don't have to downplay it because it's also on the Wii U. Mm -hmm. I think that influences this long development cycle. And of course, COVID, that did not help. If that didn't happen, I'm sure we probably would have had it already. Mm. So you've got to take all of these real world situations into account of course yeah and you know it, it is what it is it's going to be good they've, they've promised us there is a lot of hype there if they screw this up i mean everyone's going to hate nintendo aren't they they so, won't screw it up Nah, exactly it's Zelda. and that's why they've delayed it to make yeah. sure it is perfect yeah exactly because they they need it to be really mm. uh yeah I have high hopes. And it, it's okay that they are delaying it. Yeah. It's sad, but 
when you really think about it, yeah, like I said before, I would way rather wait longer and actually have an incredible game Mm -hmm. rather than rush it or put pressure on them that will in turn lead to them putting pressure on the development team or releasing a half-baked version of a game. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree. This is you, probably want... one of the most anticipated games, like ever. it is. So yeah. you cannot screw yeah. it up. No. So take the Which time, is... do it properly. Yeah. Yeah, what What's that saying? Uh, buy it. What is it? Buy it cheap. Buy it twice, or something along those lines. Uh, oh, do yeah, it, do yeah. it cheap, do it twice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something yeah, like buy that. It cheap, buy it twice. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. No, you're right. Yeah, so take the time, Nintendo. I'm giving you approval to do that. You've got my authorization. Yep. Oh. <sighs> oh, thank God. Yeah. The Nintendo, you can relax now. You, you can breathe <laughs> easy. I know it's been a long podcast no. for them, and so they'd be stressing yeah, the whole time. <laughs> no, I, I will allow this. So glad I to too that. will allow this. I, I'll allow it as well. <laughs> That's fine. That's more than fine. Oh, lovely. Well, it's been lovely chatting to you both, hasn't it? Yeah. This is the only time all week that Laura and I chat to each other. So it's been it's been nice, hasn't it, Laura? Yeah. Otherwise, he sleeps on the couch. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We have a yeah. uh, we do we live our separate lives. We we only talk mm. when we're streaming YouTube or. Yeah. No, that is a complete lie. I don't yeah, want people is. to think that we're making up this facade no. just, just for clicks. No. no, we actually just, yeah, do everything together. Yes. Work. So you basically. And all the places. That was a real yeah. awkward sight. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there was more coming. <laughs> there was, but then we'd already, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Oh, sorry. See you next week, Laura. Yeah, yeah. see you next week. <laughs> no, I'll probably see you in five minutes when we go make dinner. Dan, though, on the other hand, we do occasionally only chat to Dan during this podcast during the week. So it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you again, Dan. Hopefully you'll go check out Xenoblade or some Bayonetta or the our Mortals YouTube Phoenix video. Phoenix Rising. Yep, check that out. Yep. Check, check out our YouTube video on games to tide you over until Zelda. I think uh, you, there's I, something on there. I think you actually piqued my interest a little bit with Bayonetta. I think that I don't know why. It's a I, it's action adventure. It is very different. It's not open it's world or vibes. anything like that. It's definitely like an action adventure, move on to the next fight kind of game. But I think that you would like, you would be interested in that. I game. I don't, if I buy it and I don't like it, I will be giving you feedback on your YouTube video. Ah, oh, it's actually not on that YouTube video. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's not one of the ones we are recommended. So, uh-huh. ha! Ha! Uh-huh. <laughs> but I mean, Damn. feel free to leave it anyway. That's fine. Done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been it's been it's been our pleasure, Dan. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh having us here and uh having us on our on the podcast, yeah, having a good time with us. Where 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 can uh, where do you work again? What's what's the name of your your website? Up so what? from memory, it's uh yeah. idigitalgames.com where you oh, can oh, uh, right. purchase games and they're significantly cheaper than Steam, as an example. As an example, there is a game that I was looking at literally yesterday. It is $24.95 from Steam. It is $3.80 Australian from me. Damn. Nice. That Mind is a big difference. And yeah. they're all yeah. legitimate games, Rock. by the way. They're all completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. I'm yeah, not doing not dodgy shady. under the table things. Steam just likes to uh, get a Price up. significant margin on on what they do because they got other other things that they got to pay for. So it, it makes some sense, I guess. But yes, I noticed that was a big one. Winning. Yeah, that's a huge uh keep your eye on our digital games as well because as we mentioned earlier there is a little another team up of 
uh, iDigital and some kind of gaming that is in the works and is happening. It's coming to fruition. Mm, yeah, check out the news section. Yes. Go on, Laura. Where you'll find some articles that I've written mm. about news. So far, there's two, but there will be more mm. soon. It is expanding. So it's yes, not, not going to be just... It. So it's exciting. And if you do want to write... Uh, if you do want to write for uh, iDigital Games, then just send something to our new editor and she can have a bit of a squeeze. So, uh, yeah. The new Basically, editor is Laura, by the way. Oh, yeah, the new yeah. editor is Laura. So she pointed at herself. She forgets that this is a podcast. I do forget that a yeah. lot. Pointed doesn't so, come across in words. Yeah. <laughs> No, you've got to use words. The words. Sound effects. All sound so, effects. Yeah, all sound effects. But no, so yeah. if, you, if you are interested, you don't have to be uh, super experienced or anything like that. We basically, we're just looking for passion. If you've got passion, mm -hmm. you're into gaming and you've got a point of view, as long as you are, uh, are not an asshole then email Laura, editor at idigitalgames.com. Mm, yep, there is a uh, no asshole policy. Good. So, Well, I guess next week's podcast that's just going to be were, you two. Yeah, that's why you weren't hired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what's up, coming. Great. Yeah, that's a, that's a, fun, that's a fun endeavor. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, what, what comes from that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. It is going to be good. Very Th exciting times. Hmm. Thank you, everybody, for coming and listening to our podcast again. Next week, we've got our bicentennial or bi-decadial. Yep, 20, episode 20. Bi-decadial. Bi yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yep. yep, okay. All right. That exists. Yeah, it does. It does, yes. So now... <laughs> uh, we, we, we will be here every week so make sure you come come and check us out next week thank you so much for listening and or watching and we'll catch you then catch bye. you on the next one bye, bye. <laughs>